Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE. This is SiliconAngle.tv's CUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we have a special guest here today, and uh, Jeremy Burton, the Executive Vice President of Products and mm -hmm. Marketing, CMO. That's right. Okay. Still. But you still got, now they're adding more responsibilities on your shoulders. Right, they didn't take anything off me, <laughs> they just gave me more to do. Dave Vellante, my co-host. All right, thanks. Uh, Jeremy's been on theCUBE <laughs> since we started theCUBE, 2010, right. and uh, been a big supporter of us. We appreciate you've been uh, doing an amazing job with EMC and the branding and messaging. Thanks. Now you get the products, uh, you had the keynote today. Um, so first of all, we got to know, we got to get you talking about the keynote because Larry took some punches at EMC um, and You guys were classy. Joe was classy. He was passionate about this time in history. It's an inflection yeah. point. Um, then you came on and did the, uh, the tactical display of the demo and took a jab at Oracle, but what's like, your take on that? I know you're ex-Oracle, so you're not going <laughs> to take this lying down. Come on. We're generally nice people at EMC. <laughs> um, no, I mean, look, I, I think Oracle's mode of operation and, and Larry, it's, it's not changed. The one thing about Larry's is very predictable. And so you know that that is always on the cards. At one level, I would say uh, it's a mark of respect. He doesn't call everyone out. Uh, we were deemed worthy to be called out, which you know I think in a backhanded way, there's, there's some level of admiration for what we've achieved. Um, but you know, I, th I think at the show, I firmly believe that the, the customers, I'm not sure where they want to see a lot of that. Uh, they have EMC in their shop, they have Oracle in their shop. And if there's one thing I, I think EMC's been built on, and I know Joe, this is very near and dear to his heart, is uh, he wants to keep the customers happy. Uh, that, that's really what he's all about. And so he's tended over the years not really to get involved on any level, and I, I think you saw this morning, yeah. uh, he laughed it off, which I think is the right approach. You know, in the, in the tech business, we. You know, we swing from time to time, but ultimately, I think it's, uh, are, we, are we solving the customer problem tends to override, and, yeah. and that's probably where Let Joe's the customers be the judge of the, of, at the end of the day. Yeah, they ultimately decide and, and write the checks and keep the lights on for us, and I, I think what you'd find with Oracle as well, in front of the customer, if there's a problem, we actually do work together pretty well, so. Uh, but it's always exciting coming down here. I just hope we get invited back next year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep on doing those great keynotes. Uh, yeah. You'll be invited back. So we'll also talk about the keynote. So you yeah. did, you. You did half, basically half the keynote, I think maybe more like three quarters of the keynote. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you, you talked about, rehashing, we'll drill down on it. You showed some demos, you talked about the yeah. Project X um, and other, other projects. Yeah, so, Flash is uh, pretty interesting right now. Um, you know, what's clear to everybody is that it's going to become um, you know, a, a disruptive technology in the data center. I mean, I think there's, there's a handful right now. I think Intel multi-core continues to be a disruptor. Uh, virtualization does, and I, and I think Flash is probably the, the third pillar. Um, you know, we see it playing a role in the storage network, we see it playing a role in the server network. Um, we're pretty excited about uh, Project X, as we've called it internally. Um, still got some work to do to finish it off. Um, unfortunately, we get held to a different standard than uh, startups do. Uh, you know, we've, our customers tend to get upset if we lose data. Um, so if it goes out with an EMC badge on, we always have to you know, make sure we give it that extra pass. But the technology itself is, uh, is amazing. Um, and, and the purity of something that was designed for the new medium is pretty exciting. So you're going to hear a lot more about Extreme IO. And, then, and look, big data continues to be, I think, a big part of EMC's future. Yeah. You know? Well, you talk about the customers, obviously, EMC, huge customer base, and, and you don't want to overdrive the market at the wrong time, right? You don't yep. want to bring too much. One of the sound bites you had in your uh, keynote was, a little bit of flash goes a long way, and I right. couldn't resist the tweet saying, a lot of flash can go a lot longer way. But eventually, the startup's yep. now working on flash. We had one on yesterday called Aerospike, yep. um, um, working with the Fusion IO guys. So, it's, yep. it's, you can only feed the customers so much, right? I mean, you have a huge presence with the, with the VMAXs and, and, and your install base. Yep. What's the timetable? I know you're pedaling as fast as you can on the product side. Yeah. Um, how do you look at that? Because you can only go as fast as you can execute. Y yeah, you, you always, I think in tech, and we're, we're, we're the masters of, of believing that the, everything's going to flip tomorrow, and reality is a lot of these trends take years. Um, if you look at the typical refresh cycle of a storage array, it's probably you know, uh, a mi minimum of three years. Um, and so these transitions never happen as quickly as you think, but they do happen. Um, so the best thing we felt we could do right now 
is take our existing technology and infuse it with Flash, and, and hence the hybrid array. Um, and I think customers, they can get a lot of benefit for not much uh, outlay from a you know, kind of capital outlay standpoint. Um, but for certain environments and certain workloads, you're going to need fundamentally different technology. And so we want to be working on that stuff as well. And you know, server flash with VF cache and, and, and Thunder, which you're going to see in the early part of next year, um, that, that's a big part of our future. Uh, and I think the, the all flash array, I mean the interesting thing about server flash right now, you know, if you need it, you really need it. And you're going to pay 10 bucks a gigabyte for it, right? I mean, you're going to pay a lot of money because for it. Because there's some value, a bigger value you're getting out of well, it. Well, if you're desperate, I mean, if, you know, if you're Facebook and, and response time is everything and you want to go stuff a 10,000 servers full of flash, you, you're going to buy a, you know, DAS works, right? But realistically, everybody knows that DAS sucks. I mean, it really does suck. It's always been faster, by the way, even with this. Dave wrote a post called, get your head out of your DAS. Well, your head out of your but, DAS. It, <laughs> but it does, it sucks, right? And, and, and you know, DAS, DAS, DAS with disk is not that different to DAS with flash. It's fast, right? And it was fast with disk as well. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is if the thing blows up, you lose all your data. Now, for certain workloads, that's yeah. fine, but, but for not for all of them. So, we, we think that ultimately, um, you know, these all flash arrays, because they protect the data as well as serve up the data quickly, we think they're going to have a huge role to play. So, so Jeremy, you mentioned that things take a long time. I think we'd all agree yeah. with that in this business. Uh, at the same time, EMC's become much more anticipatory with some of its acquisition strategy, the acquisition of Extreme IO. Yep. Um, rather than wait five years and pay 2.5 billion like you did for Data Domain, you really went for it. Yeah. Um, Thanks for reminding us about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, hey, it's paid off too, though. <laughs> yeah, right? no, I mean, it but so, it, it maybe yeah. taking a little bit more risk, uh, but at the same time, seeing the trends, even yeah. though it's going to take a long time. Pat Gelsinger, a couple years ago on theCUBE at EMC World said, you know, look, admittedly we're behind, but we're going to do some things to catch up. Then you did VF Cash, and then now you've made this big acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, from a product portfolio standpoint, mm -hmm. are you there yet? Or do you have to do more, say for example, integration yeah. with VMware? Take us through where you see that going. Yeah, unfortunately in this business, and it keeps us all gainfully employed, uh, you're never there. <laughs> so you never have, you never look at the product portfolio and go, I'm done, I can take the week off, you know? Because th there's always uh, someone, I think the beauty of the tech industry, there's always someone challenging and someone uh, pushing. Um, we've got more work to do on Flash, clearly. Um, we still, you know, we haven't shipped Thunder. I think the server networked Flash, you know, shared Flash on the server. I think that is going to be a big deal. Um, we've got more work to do there. Um, the, the, the integration with VMware uh, is a big deal. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see us continue to do more in the way of uh, security. Um, you know, vShield is very, very promising. I think it's a great framework for uh, taking security into the virtual world, um, but there's a lot of work still to do in that area as well. And I mean, I, I really liked what we did with backup. You know, we with VDP, we embedded Avamar right into uh, vSphere. It's the default backup client. Uh, I'd love us, to, you know, to see to see us do more of that kind of stuff in in the realm of security because everybody needs security. And the more you can build into the system, I think the better off everyone's going to be. So before we get off Flash, I wonder if I can, yeah. in your keynote you talked about big data and the transformational effects that it could have. Yeah. Basically in the last five, six, seven years we've been cutting, 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 cutting costs and yeah. the, the, the discourse is, you think, going to change. There was kind of a semi-prediction that you yeah. made and we haven't agreed with it. I wanted to ask you about that in the context of Flash and its potential impact on bottom line business productivity. What do, you, what do you see there and what do you, what do you predict in terms of its uh, ability to really drive you know, productivity, it, revenue per employee? Yeah, I mean, fla like Flash in and of itself uh, uh, is going to achieve nothing, right? Um, uh, but I think if you can build smart software on top of Flash, that can deliver huge value. So think about if you were, I mean, I talked this morning about a storage array designed for Flash. Let, let's go a step further. Imagine if you designed a database that just assumed that the I.O. problem had gone away. Just imagine how much more quickly you could serve up response to queries. And I think, I think that kind of thing is going to have uh, a profound impact on business. When you start to design databases and applications for this new medium, you're going to get response in a fraction of the time and you should be able to deliver an order of magnitude more functionality. So I want to also ask you, so just changing gears a bit, Oracle's made a lot of noise about cloud. Yep. Something that you guys have been talking about for quite some yep. time. So do, you, do you feel like Oracle's Generally, maybe Larry specifically, a little rewriting of cloud history. Um, 
I don't, I don't know whether he's rewriting history. I think, I think he's maybe adopting a bit <laughs> of history. <laughs> but uh, look, Oracle's always a factor, right? They're, they're, a, they're a huge company with a huge install base. Um, we've taken a different approach to them. Um, we're not in the service provider business, so we've made a conscious decision to say, um, look, we're going to partner with service providers. We're going to be an arms supplier, if you like. We're going to do everything we can uh, to make our partner service providers successful and we think that they will run the application workloads of the future. Um, and Oracle's taken a, a slightly different approach, saying we'll provide the infrastructure and we'll be the service provider. Um, and and you know, whether or not people want to come to Oracle directly to be their service provider, um, or whether they want to go to a third party uh, remains to be seen. And, we, we and they say we, we don't play well with others either, multi-vendor wise. Y That's yeah. a challenge for them. You mentioned flexibility yeah. in your and you jab at them a little bit, I but mean, it's truth in that. Yeah, and I think, I think <laughs> in, li in life, you, you know, if you could do it all yourself, you probably would, right? Yeah. I mean, I think everybody is in this, like I trust, you know, the person I trust most is me. <laughs> yeah. And so if I can do it all myself, then, you know, maybe I'm happy. Uh, the question is, is do you have the bandwidth? Do you have the resources? Do you have the expertise to do it all? We, we've made a conscious decision like, hey, we're not a service provider, we're a technology yeah. provider. O Oracle obviously has got a, um, an opinion that they can do it all. So for those who didn't see Jeremy's keynote, you, you said, tongue in cheek, flexibility and choice is not something we've heard a lot about this week, and I tweeted out, yeah, <laughs> I'll say, ha, you know, blah, blah. <laughs> My question is, if you were running Oracle, would you do it differently? <laughs> you know, the thing is, you look at Oracle's uh, share price, you look at their valuation, and it's hard to say <laughs> it's hard to say it's not working, <laughs> right? So, uh, you They're know, only 152 one, billion dollar market cap right and now. 30, what, 40 billion in revenue? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, good. you yeah. know, I left Oracle 10 <laughs> years ago, and they were, you know, half the size uh, with half the market cap. So, yeah. you know, clearly it wasn't me leaving <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that has cost them. But, you know, I, I think there is room though. Uh, I think customers want choice, they want alternatives. Um, you're going to find people who are going to go the Oracle route. They're going to, you know, be okay with the, yeah, you know, really Exadata is almost a kickback to the, to the mainframe era, where you've got a proprietary system uh, running a specific application. Or AS400 is probably, you know, maybe even a better analogy. Uh, we we we've got a different strategy, and I, I think there is probably room for both. Um, I like ours better, <laughs> but it's it's hard to point at Oracle and say it's not working. Because yeah. I mean, they're fierce competitors too. They have a lot of things. We give them a lot of props and a lot of areas. We also kind of challenge them, but you know, they are, you know, you know they're competitive and they're sales driven. Yeah. And they, they work that. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and, and if you're in the same markets as Oracle, you've got to be on your game to compete. Yeah, um, got it. So, you know, we, we have a healthy degree of paranoia. At the same time, we've got a lot of mutual customers. So I want to talk about um, some of the coolness you've been doing in the marketing side, obviously, now that you're running the product, that was okay. cool. We'd love to talk more about that, but the marketing's been great. You know, we've always been proud to work with EMC and have a chance to watch you come into EMC at the first Cube that year and Cloud Meets Big Data. Now you got the new campaign, um, mm -hmm. which Cloud Meets Big Data is totally still works. The longevity's still there, so that was a success. Yeah. Now the face of big data yeah. um, is genius in the sense of you're taking it to the mainstream where people don't want to go under the hood. Right. They want to see the, the hype translated into value, right? So, mm -hmm. what does it mean for take me? Take us yeah. through the mindset of Jeremy Burton with the uh, the face of big data for the folks who haven't been following. Um, the face of big data is um, EMC's campaign in a quasi-independent way, not so much EMC, you know, uh, sales pitch. Really, more of a service, public service, to share uh, examples of what's going on in real life that where big data changes the world. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you can go to the face of big data emc yeah. com slash human face of big data com or emc com slash human face of big data you end up in face of big data place. com so take us through the mindset okay obviously uh, there was a New York Times article written you spent a lot of dough on it so it's expensive centerpiece yeah. of your campaign yeah I've seen the keynote you had some great images yeah. and stories so take us through the mindset of this program um, well reality is I think with this kind of a project I mean I, I just had an amazing guy Rick Smolin, came to me with an amazing idea. And I think in my career, I, I've, I've had a lot of joy betting on individuals. Um, you know, reports and committee meetings I have a lot less time for, but he's a guy who had an amazing idea, had a bit of a track record for doing something like it before, um, wanted to go out, uh, send 100 photographers to 30 countries and capture images of how big data is changing humanity. Thought that was cool. 
um, didn't really know whether he could do it, but thought it was cool. Uh, said, hey, we're going to do a census of the planet. Thought that was cool. Said, we're going to send the book that I create to 10,000s of the world's most important people on the same day. I thought, that's really cool. And then we want to get into schools and we want to help kids understand what data can do for them. And so, you know, this was a half hour uh, conversation at Pete's Coffee that turned into two and a half hours. Um, and so we bet on Rick and, 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 and Rick's team and he's a journalist. So he's not a tech guy, he's a photographic journalist and he's a storyteller. And I've been blown away. I mean, I really did think that the only folks capable of using big data were up and down Highway 101 <laughs> because it was so advanced and so cool. But he's uncovered a couple of hundred amazing stories from around the world and they've, they've all got this common theme of the internet of things and collecting and analyzing information and seeing the big picture. And I think that's something that um, you can apply to most businesses. And it gives us a, a much more disarming and human way to go broach the conversation with a lot of business people who candidly we don't speak to that often. Is so. this going to be a long, longer campaign? Obviously it's a great idea, an amazing mm -hmm. idea. Um, it's a human idea, it's a human social web. It's yeah. personal, right, so it's about the people. So, is it going to be a longer campaign? Is it going to be like Cloud Me Spade, are you going to keep it going for a while, or? Yeah, we, we've got a number of waves uh, coming up. We did uh, Mission Control in New York, London, and Singapore, took place actually today. Um, we, uh, the census is uh, still running. We've got the iOS uh, app coming out any day now. It was supposed to be an app. We, we got caught in the iOS 6 jam, <laughs> and, but we had about a hundred and, last time I checked, 107,000 downloads on Android. We had about a million questions answered. We're hoping we can double that with iOS. And so you've got a couple of million questions that you can start to, to understand what's going on you know, on the planet uh, in, a, in a relatively short period of time. But this campaign is going to run through next year. Um, I want to take it on the road. Uh, I want to invite uh, folks from organizations to you know, hear, hear about the human face of big data but also hear about the corporate face of big data, and there are a lot of you know, similarities and correlation that can be derived between the two. Well, you guys are doing great with EMC TV. The Cube was on a special segment with uh, Richard Schlesinger from 48 Hours in your office. They did a, uh, a Cube special, Dave and I did with your, your team, so great on the, on the marketing side. Yeah, Let's look for that. So we took, what we did was we took the best of the Cube content on okay. big data and weaved and it in. And created kind of a story uh, around Richard curated the Cube. So he took the best clips that ah. tied into some of your themes. So it was uh, actually, we were kind of a, one of the tech geek faces of big data, I guess, if you look at it that way. <laughs> yeah. um, but look for that on EMC TV. So great stuff. On the business side, there's mm -hmm. been some news. So today there's some news that EMC yep. um, has a new CTO reporting into you. That's the right. The CTO office is now reporting to you. And Jeff Nick is moving to work with Moritz, is it? Right, we got a new EMC. mission for Jeff. Um, Paul Moritz spending his time on big data and this next generation of cloud applications. So, you know, a, a mighty and worthy mission there for Jeff. Um, we, is we he going to move to the East Coast, stay on the East Coast? Uh, or is he going to? We end up being in these weirdo bi-coastal <laughs> <laughs> situations because we've got half the company East and half the company West and I'm sure Jeff will end up going back and forth between the two. And then we've got John Rose uh, coming in who joined us from Huawei, uh, which is interesting because uh, it's a company that is doing well that not many people know a lot about, number one. Um, he's a systems guy. Reminds me a bit of Pat Gelsinger a little bit, actually. Um, you know, he's a silicon guy and yeah, networking yeah. servers and all that kind of stuff, which I think if you uh, take a view of the future, you've got to take much more of a systematic approach. I mean, to his company was crushing Cisco and Juniper and a lot of big service provider deals. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're competitive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's got some insight there. Uh, clearly, you know, we're big partners with Cisco, and so, you know, hopefully the, there's some insight he can uh, uh, maybe lend so there So what's as well. he going to do for you guys? Is it, and so how's this, is there any changes when the CTO office is going to report to you? Are you going to be setting the agenda? They're going to be reporting trends to you? Yeah, the well, big picture stuff? He's got a technical background, right? He's, but he's but very you, technical you, guy, You're yeah. going to push him, I bet, into a marketing role as well in some, some may, may, Well, yeah. so he's first, first <laughs> thing, you know, primary directive, I'm a big, big fan of Robo, Cup years ago, right? The primary directive for John is, <laughs> is technical and product strategy. Um, we've got a very diverse portfolio. You know, someone's got to uh, put you know, some method behind the madness, make, make sure that we're marching in the right direction. We've got a divisional structure at EMC. We've got some amazing guys in the divisions that work as CTOs. You know, John's goal in some respects is to work with those divisional guys uh, and make sure what they're working on hooks up to the overall strategy. Uh, make sure that we hammer flat some of the technical issues that you know break out between the different product groups. Uh, so that's job number one. Uh, and then you know there's 
uh, what I call kind of classic CTO programs. I mean, he, he's, he's on the hook to you know, really drive an innovation program at the company. Um, you know, our distinguished engineers and our fellow programs, I mean, all, you know, he's behind uh, all of that kind of stuff. But you know, first and foremost, technology, product strategy, all of that good stuff. So, Moritz is now at, in the home court of EMC. I yep. see Pat's over there running VMware. We had some good commentary on that. Yep. So I've, my comment was, Paul's got the new canvas. At the VMworld, we talked about the, that he's yep. got the, the blank canvas or a fresh canvas to work off yep. of. Um, you know, you're at EMC, you know, he's, VMware's out there, strategic partner, you get the rest of the yeah. industry, you bring in a network guy, you scratch your head, you say, hmm, Nasir mm. over at VMware, software-defined data center, EMC, yeah. software on top of Flash, hmm, Jeremy. So like, yeah. what's Moritz thinking right now? What's the mindset and how you guys, um, you know, passing the puck back and forth to each other? Yeah, I, th I think right now, uh, and we've, we've not really been that descriptive about Paul and what his role is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what we do know is we've got a number of interesting assets, not just around big data, but I think the applications that you would build on top of a big data platform. Paul clearly has got a great track record. He built a, a little platform a few years ago called Windows. <laughs> so he's got a track record of building yeah. software development platforms. Um, and, and that's really what is consuming most of his time right now. I, th I think what you'll see John focus on um, is much more the infrastructure play. Um, networking clearly is a part of that, but it's it's not just networking in and of itself. I think it's networking in relation to servers, in relation to storage, in relation to virtualization, and how does that ecosystem come together? Yeah, the software-defined infrastructure, as we're calling it. Yeah, it, it, what, what was kind of weird this morning, I felt like after listening to Larry's session on Sunday, you had the software company talking about hardware, and then you the <laughs> we were company. the hardware company talking about <laughs> software. <laughs> yeah, and you had a great demo with the Green Plum Chorus, and I heard, yeah, of course, we Dave pulled up our little our dashboard of the Twitter fire hose, and it's real time. You said that you have consumed up the Twitter fire hose. Yeah. Um, six million, six billion, billion, billion records. Billion records, that's, you know, that's quite a fee to pay for Twitter for the, the CPMs, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> did you suck it all in? You consumed it into yeah, a corpus? What'd you do with we, it? We, what did you, we, thousand we, node? Well, see, yeah, we, so Can we, we get a copy of it? <laughs> 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 no, we built this thousand node Hadoop cluster out in, in, in the middle of nowhere, and what, it was actually in conjunction with the Human Face of Big Data Project. We got access to the Twitter firehose, we, we dumped it in there, and we've actually been working with um, a couple of partners, one on the floor here, Tableau, uh, yep. In fact, if you go see the human face of big data exhibit on the back of our booth, we have a data DJ there um, who is doing visualizations um, for the human face of big data, but a lot of those visualizations are derived from uh, mining that they've done uh, in our big yeah. uh, Twitter Hadoop cluster. And it was actually fascinating because most of the work, y when you talk about searching for needles in a haystack, that's exactly what it is. We're trying to tease out themes. We know we've got a, a story in the human face of big data launch about crime and how big data can help prevent crime. And so we then went to Twitter and said, well, what have we got about crime? And then what have we got about murder or guns or drugs or, and so we, we teased out of the Twitter fire hose um, interesting sentiment about certain topic areas that were related to the story that we had in the human face of big data uh, launch. And what shocked me was, hey, I thought this would be an act of God and a year-long exercise. I mean, it took no time. I mean, it took a, I mean, a few days, and we had everything that we needed. So uh, it was absolutely fascinating. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on to the Cube. And uh, my final question is, what's next for next year? We always ask this question, and you always have a good answer. So I want to ask it again. What's next for you on your roadmap? Obviously, you got to take this to the next level. What you got on your plate? Yeah, you got a lot on your plate now. Product and marketing. Um, what else is kind of, you know, yeah, fostering in your mind in terms of what you want to do? Yeah, I think ne ne next year is a huge year for us. Um, I almost look at this year as much as we've done a lot was was probably one of our more bare years from a product perspective. Um, there's some pretty exciting things that we've got lined up. It's clearly going to be a big year for Flash. No, no, no surprises there. Um, we might even tell you what Paul Moritz is going to be doing next year. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, I think that'll be fun. We'll figure um, it out. He's in Palo Alto. I'm going to drive over there know, and gate in, crash it. Intel multi-core, I said it was one of the most disruptive things in the data center. Um, a lot of people consume the process of power. A lot of people don't uh, rewrite or architect their software to take advantage of multi-core. 
we've done a lot of that work and some of the numbers that we're getting back are, are mind blowing. Um, and I also think you're going to see us uh, talk a lot more about the world of security. Uh, that, that I think is still um, low hanging fruit, top of mind, uh, we've not solved it yet. So that, that's another area that I think you're going to see us raise the profile of in the coming year. Okay, Jeremy Burton, Executive Vice President, um, CMO, rising star at EMC, and uh, they kind of goofed on you on stage and put a little picture of you know, Joe Tucci and then <laughs> Mitt Romney. Larry. Um, <laughs> great uh, success at EMC, continue to do a great job. We'd like working with you guys, and obviously it's performing uh, with your success. So thanks for coming on theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE. I'm with Dave Vellante, I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>